Here are two box shadow animations that look pretty much the same. But one is a kick butt way to do it, and the other can be janky as hell and it can kill the performance of your site. So in this video, we're looking at a nice trick that you can use to animate shadows without a performance hit, how you can check the performance in real time, and if you stick around until the end, a nice little bonus tip as well. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and if you're new to my channel, here we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And speaking of making things look good, one of the biggest problems that happens is people assuming that if things look good on their computer, they look good everywhere. The truth is, not everyone is running an iPhone X or a MacBook Pro, or they don't have these crazy fast internet speeds that I only dreamed of having as a teenager in the late 90s while waiting for images to load. And what? Really, you do need to take performance seriously, and you need to realize that not everyone is on a machine that is as fast as yours. And one of the most common issues I see is people animating things that they shouldn't animate. And uh, Shadows is really one of those things that can make a big performance hit. And we're also going to push that even more and show you how we can take something and turn it into like something that could be super smooth or super janky that look exactly the same. And we're gonna break down the difference and really see in the tools how you can analyze what's actually going on as well. Normally I am in VS Code, but because this is such a simple little thing that we're looking at, I am here in CodePen. So the link for this is down below if you wanna check it out. And basically what I've done up until now is just create these two little content boxes that are exactly the same. And when we hover on top, they move up a little bit and then they move back down. Now to really hammer home this feeling, there's a, there already is a little uh, shadow on there to give a sense of depth, but it looks weird that it moves forward and there's no change in the shadow. So usually what you see when people do this is, um, and you can see actually just really fast, I have my content, but then I have a pseudo hover and a shadow hover. So just so we can do them separately. So the first one here is my shadow hover, so we can select that. So usually what we see is people coming in and on their shadow hover, or you know, on whatever they want to have their hover effect, they'll just come and change their box shadow. So you come in and then you say that this will go up to like a 0.3. This can be, uh, my offset will go a little bit bigger. We'll make the offset. We'll try it up to a five. The blur can go up quite a bit too, and maybe a small little 0.25M. And if you don't know too much about box shadows and all the different values here, I do have a series that dives into those. Um, so now by doing that, when we hover on top, we can see that shadow coming in and off like that. And I think the shadow actually looks pretty good, but obviously we need that to transition as well. Um, so I am going to just steal this, my content one, and I'm going to put it on my dot shadow hover because I don't want this to be on both of them. Uh, so the transition here, I need to transition my transform, but I also want to transition my box shadow. So we'll take that one, one second ease as well. And we can go and check that out. You can see it goes up and then back down and the shadow gets a little bit darker. Maybe we could even make that blur a little bit more. I'm pretty happy with that. And we could speed things up and play with the timing. Maybe it's a little bit slow, but overall I'm pretty happy with the, the type of effect that that's creating. The issue with this is when we animate box shadows and when we animate a lot of different things that people animate, it actually causes some performance issues. Uh, it's not too complicated to set up. It is a little bit more work, but I really do think it's worth it, especially if you have a lot of different animations going on. And I did get this idea from Tobias here. So this is a blog post that he wrote. So I do think we have to give credit where it is due. And if you want to check out this, it is linked down below. So the we have the shadow there. So the way he did this and the way this makes a lot of sense, and we will see how we can check the performance of these. And we're gonna compare them in a second. And we're, I'll show you in your dev tools, a few different ways where you can see what is actually happening here. Uh, so in this case, I don't want my, I want to take my pseudo hover, pseudo hover, because we want to be looking at our second box on this side. So that's my pseudo hover right there. So on the pseudo hover, I will need to put a position of relative on this, be relative, because we are going to be uh, using our pseudo element on here and the pseudo element will be absolutely positioned. So pseudo hover, and we will do an after. And for that, let's give it, if you need a pseudo element, you need to have content. And if you're not used to pseudo elements or you don't know them too well, I do have an in-depth series on those. Uh, so we have my content, then we're going to come in and say that the position is absolute. We're going to give this a top zero, left zero, right zero, bottom zero. And to make sure that it's actually showing up, let's give this a background of we'll say lime green 
And there we go, we have my lime green suit element covering my entire element. And you may be going, well, why are you doing this? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shadow hover here and the hover one. So this is the finish state. We want, we want to get the shadow when this is all said and done. And we're gonna copy that and we're gonna move it down over to here and put that on my suit element. But you go, well, Kevin, that's just breaking everything because it's always showing up. And we don't need my lime green on there anymore. And there we go. So you can see it's in the finished state. So when we're here, it's exactly what we want right now. And the idea with this is we're sort of pre-rendering the shadow. We're bringing our shadow in ahead of time. And what we're gonna do is drop the opacity of this down to zero. And then what we wanna do is come through and say that my hover after, so my pseudo hovers hover after. <laughs> so you know when we hover, we're selecting the pseudo element. And we're gonna do an opacity of one. And that means that now when I'm here, you can see it turns on and then it turns off. And then what we can do is just grab the transition that we had right here. And on my pseudo hover after, we want to come in and transition that, but we only need one because the transform isn't on the pseudo element. The transform is happening on the parent element. And here we can drop this to opacity, opacity. And so now when I hover on this one and when I hover on that one, they look pretty much identical, right? There's a, pretty much the same thing happening for both of them. You may be going, well, Kevin, this is a lot more work to get the exact same effect. Let's go ahead and look at why we wanna do all this. So I am going to be opening this pen in debug mode just because if you're looking at it in the regular pen from my experience, um, this is an iframe, so you can't get it to work. So we're gonna jump over to debug mode here and just hit refresh to make sure it's the most up-to-date version. And we're gonna open up the dev tools and jump into here. And there is a performance section in your dev tools where you can uh, record the performance and see different things happening. But for simplest, so you know, just to show you really quickly, if I hit record, you can see that one. I'll go on to this one and then I'm gonna hit stop. And you can see all the different parts and different things that were happening where frames were running. You can get your frame rates. You can see the scripting, the rendering, the painting and all of that. So let's select, this is when I did my first one on the left side. And I'm just doing this really quickly and we're gonna look at another easier way to see all of this. But you can see that uh, there was 32 milliseconds of rendering, 18 milliseconds of painting going on. And then if we go and grab the other side here, there's only two milliseconds of painting and 20 milliseconds of rendering. Again, to compare that over on this side, 32 and 18. So, you know, you can see from this one right here, just the comparison as I quickly select it, there's only the painting pretty much, it didn't have to repaint almost anything. Now, this is a little clunky, I find, especially if you're just looking for things like this. So another way that you can get in and check things out here is if you click in your dev tools and you go to more tools and you go to, the performance monitor, and this I love because it's in real time. You can see it happening. So I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. And I've made it so we're only looking at our style recalcs, but you can check your CPU usage. Um, if you're doing J you know, JavaScript and it's listening for events, you can be looking for the frame rates and different things like that. And the layouts, if things are being repainted on the page. And so when we hover on that first one, and then I drop down, you can see here that it's showing me in real time the style recalcs per second. And we hit, what, about 60 there, I guess? And you can even see the layout changed once and then once again there. And you can see the CPU usage, almost nothing, but there was a little bit of CPU usage going on there. So we're hitting about 50, 60 frames. I think we're getting up to 60 uh, when we do that on that one. Let's go check, and remember this is the one where I animated the box shadow. And let's go and check out this one. Well, that's not so much, is it? We can go back down, huh? I mean, isn't, let's, let's turn these off. We don't need those. We're just, look at the difference here. So remember this one hits close to 60. There we go, we hit 60 exactly. And then we can come onto this one and we can see that we're getting up to 16, I think was the highest it got up to there. So the difference there is substantial. And this is for a really simple little animation that we're doing where we're just moving things around a little bit. So if you're asking yourself why this is happening, it's because opacity doesn't require the page to be repainted. The only things you generally want to be animating or transitioning are opacity and things like transforms, which is also why here on my transform, I set it up to be a transform and not using something like top. Because if you are going to do this, and you see it a lot, position, 
you see people do it a lot and let's even we'll, we'll kill this even more <laughs> let's take our shadow hover and let's give this a position of relative and a top of zero and then on the hover let's give this a top of how much did we want to move it by the transform was uh this one here 0.35 m so top negative 0.35 m and often what we would see people do and let's take okay one second i got to move a few things around or this will just be my um pseudo hover so this is going to work there you can see it's still working but this one now it's it's uh, we're not doing the it, the movement is not happening from my transform anymore. Uh, the movement's not happening from my translate anymore. It's happening from that top property. So this one we can change to our top, and it should look exactly the same. There we go. And you can even see it's really janky. See how the frame rate on that is just died, and here it's nice and smooth, and here it's like super jank. Oh, that's painful to watch. <laughs> So if we come back and let's go look at what we were looking at before where we can see why this is happening. So now if we look on this one, it's still nice and smooth. This one, you can see it's still all really janky over here. And we can go and look at what's happening. And in this case, there's actually a couple things happening. If you stayed on the recalcs, you might say it looks exactly the same. Whereas here, we're still hitting about 16. And if we hit on this one, we're still maxing out at 60. So you're saying, well, okay, why is it so janky then compared to this one, which is super nice and smooth now? if it's still maxing out at the, that amount of styles. And this is actually where it comes into the layouts. So if we go and look at my layouts per second, this one is going to be changing probably at the max, you can see it's this little nothing mountain. If we go into this one, holy moly, we're recreating or repainting the page for every frame along the way there. And even actually this is where if we jump over, let's close this down. All right, so let's let's check it out in the performance tab here as well. Um, so I'm going to hit record and we're going to go up and then down and then up and then down and hit stop. And so this is the first one moving up here and then it when it moves down is on this side. So if we just take that whole thing all together right here, so we can see there's tons of rendering and tons of repainting going on while we're in here. And let's go and take a look now at over on this side where things were smooth as butter before. And my goodness, it's super, everything is super low. So there's nothing much going on. We're not pushing the computer because all we're doing is playing with opacity and playing with our transform translate. Whereas here we have opacity changing. Here we have our box shadows changing. We have the top that's changing. And this is causing lots and lots of issues to go on with the, the page. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something along the way as well. If you enjoy using box shadows, but you'd like to go deeper with them, I have a whole series that takes a deep dive on those. Uh, if you want to do more with pseudo elements, I have a series on those as well. And if you never want to miss out on anything that I'm up to, why don't you sign up for my newsletter, which is linked just down below as well. And since you stuck around, you get the bonus tip, which is looking at if you have shadows um, that are really big, you can see that this shadow is going on top of the one on the left, but this shadow is not going on top of the one on the right, even though it's moving forward. That's weird, right? And that's because the shadow is, you know, they're on the same level. It doesn't know that we want that shadow to be in front. So to fix that on my hover, what I want to do is just come in and throw a Z index on here. Z in, got to spell things right to do it. Z index of one. And now that this is here, and this only works because I have a position relative on there, so that allows me to use my Z index. And now that shadow is on front, and that shadow is on front. And this is happening because now when I hover, there's a new stacking context, and that shadow is following along, and it's actually going in front of the other elements that are on that page. So just like that, we can fix the issue. It is not perfect because on this one, it's always in front, whereas here, it's in front until I stop hovering, because then that Z index goes away. But for the most part, like I've exaggerated here to just really show you how the effect is working. I think for the most part, it's going to be really minor, but it can just help add that little extra uh, level of detail and a nice way to explore stacking contexts a little bit along the way as well. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons for their support each and every month. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.